morning. Good morning. Okay, um, hello everyone. Welcome back to the interim meetings after uh, in the new year. Um, this is an interim meeting of the CBO working group. We have a short agenda of items. Um, that's a regular ITF, uh, it's a regular ITF thing, so the note well applies. Um, I think you're all familiar with that. I'd like to go through the agenda first and then we can um, uh, start with the, with the actual items. Uh, so, the, um, Carsten has a few updates on what has been submitted to the IESG. Um, we'll talk briefly about um, the next steps towards more control and modules. Um, and then uh, the next, and then about how we will progress with the deterministic encoding and with the uh, with uh, DC bore um, as is used by Gordian. There is one more block at the end um, that will um, cover the topic of how we can use a CBOR in the context of Yang, where all the values are um, Yang typically string valued, and how we can do better there. Anything you'd like to add, um, resequence, or otherwise note here? Hearing nothing, either my audio is broken um, or there are no changes. Um, but I'll notice uh, if, if it's the first right away. Uh, so, Carsten, please start with your updates on what has been submitted and the document. Okay, thank you. So, your audio is not, bro not broken. Is mine broken? Uh, no, your audio is fine. And uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Christopher, for pointing out that uh, the, uh, this um, the Gordian topic is not only about the use of DC board, but also about the envelope um, as a larger thing. Um, it's in the list now, so um, we won't miss this. Good. Good. Okay, so um, I made some some slides. These are not slides in the sense that you can look at them and. Uh, find out what what uh, I have been saying, but I am going to say something to these slides. Um, so uh, right now we have uh, quite a few documents at the the trailing end of their uh, processing. One is in the RFC editor queue, and uh, actually has been in the RFC editor queue for quite a while. It seems to me we have a little bit of of constipation there at the. Uh, moment. Um, so um, let's see how that goes. But this is an approved document. The, the tags are allocated and so on. So uh, that, that is the absence of an RFC number is not uh, really something that, that should uh, stop us from, from using uh, those tags. So these are tags 1001, 1002, 1003 for daytime, <clears throat> for extended daytime. So um, there is nothing stuck in ISG at the moment, um, which uh, I hope we will change in the next few days. Um, we um, have working group last, last call passed uh, for uh, two of the documents that, that we generally put into the CDL 2.0 uh, slot. So one, one is the, the fixes and updates to the CDL grammar. And uh, the other one really isn't about CDDL at all, but it, it's an um, uh, update and refresh of the uh, extended diagnostic notation, which is just very useful uh, to, to use tools uh, with. Uh, so people who are using CDDL usually are also using CBO diagnostic notation. So these are essentially done. And now I'm confused because these have... Oh, the, the, those are the numbers that, that actually passed the working class call. I'm going to talk about what happened since. And finally, uh, with CBOR Pact, uh, we, we are continuing a validation uh, process. So, I, for instance, I must admit I haven't updated my implementation to the most recent uh, version. And uh, I think other people should have a chance to do that as well. And in a previous interim meeting, we said that 
uh, we want to do this until about end of February, so we can uh, then put a lid on on this and and uh, maybe do a second working class call, uh, but uh, ship it to the ISG then. So we should see the the three documents on the lower half of the slide uh, going to the ISG uh, before uh, Brisbane. Um, so, um, yeah, the, the, the grammar and literals documents actually have had updates because uh, Christian did a pretty thorough Shepherd's review and um, there, there were quite a few things that, that uh, could be clarified even more. Um, so these are, I think, now, now ready to ship them. And um, the CDDL more control uh, document has gained a printf in the last round in, in December. And the, the printf probably needs a little more specification text, just pointing to, to POSIX uh, here or to, to um, ISO IC 9899 is uh, not sufficient. Um, so that, that is uh, a to-do item. Um, I don't know if we want to add anything else in this round. Uh, if we miss it, uh, we can open the next uh, document and uh, we kind of do this every three years or so. So um, yeah, we can register the, the uh, uh, operator names right away if, if we find that we want to use uh, them. But it's nice to have a draft or a specification and RFC that can be referenced. Um, so to to get a little bit more feedback uh, at, at the previous interim, we said we, we plan an interim specifically focusing on um, CDDL 2.0 uh, use. Uh, this interim is not the, the one we plan to do and uh, we still have to do the planning, but uh, since this uh, uh, probably should best be done before Brisbane, we probably have to start uh, planning uh, that interim soon. So that's the CDDL control uh, operators. And finally, the CDDL modules uh, concept um, is already used undercover in, in some places. Uh, but I think people will be reluctant to actually put it into their specifications uh, before the, the document uh, is uh, has advanced a little bit more. So we have a little bit of a, a catch-22 problem here. We, we don't get feedback before people use it. People don't use it before we have finished it. Um, so again, this is uh, probably something we can address with an interim on, on uh, CDL 2.0 uh, use, which we need to plan soon. OK, then packed. Um, I just submitted Dash 10 this uh, morning. Um, actually, uh, we hadn't uh, submitted an update of the document for quite quite a while. Uh, so um, th that was uh, simply necessary by, by uh, the automatic expiration uh, time. But it, it now includes various editorial and, and NIT uh, fixes um, that there is no content um, change, no change to the technical content. And again, uh, we want to continue the validation and uh, time box this uh, at, at, uh, again at the end, uh, to the end of uh, February. Um, and um, I think we have a somewhat separate discussion about implicit and incremental table setup uh, mechanisms, including an interesting interaction with deterministic encoding where we, I think, need to understand whether this is a good thing or a bad thing. Um, so th this should go on, but may not actually influence this document, except that we will learn something from this, this discussion that may be uh, useful. Um, there, there are also some, some uh, comments that still need to be processed, like uh, Christian's email reference here. Um, we we uh, probably want to take one more look at benchmarks like uh, DNS and CBOR. We want to get more impl implementer feedback and we want to finish this uh, by the end of February. Okay, so this is uh, pretty much the, the um, document status. 
part now to the the main content of this uh, meeting. Um, so I submitted an, an update to the CDE document recently, a couple of days ago. Uh, we uh, had some some general agreement that uh, this should be advanced soon because people out there are wondering what the status of deterministic encoding in general is. And what we now have to do is uh, get some details fixed. And uh, one was the security considerations. Dash01 has some security considerations, but please, that's one paragraph. It's probably worth thinking about this uh, some more. Um, and um, the other one uh, has already happened on the mailing list uh, quite a bit. Uh, the, the need to cover all of Seaboard uh, kind of uh, puts it into a bind with NAN payloads, which are this, this uh, forgotten stepchild, um, not only of, of Seaboard, but one would say of all of IEEE 754. It, it's a feature that, that the floating point standard 754 has, uh, but it's also one where 754 has been very reluctant uh, to actually make decisions that would make this more useful. Um, so most implementations uh, also do not implement all of it or even, even small parts of it. Um, and that has uh, certainly to do with many implementations that, that are a few years old already at a time when we didn't really care about uh, complete coverage of all of SIBA uh, that much. But with CDE, we, we have to do that. And uh, the current draft adds some guidance, in particular, Dash01 adds some guidance how to handle uh, NANs with uh, pay payloads. Um, on the other hand, we know that this will not be a part of the CBOR standard uh, that will have a lot of complete implementations. People will probably uh, implement only basic support or no, not even that. Um, and uh, the, the question that, that uh, really was on, on the mailing list uh, in, in the last couple of days is, is that actually a problem? Uh, what do we want to say about this? Um, so do, do we want to, to um, have a, a dark corner, an official dark corner of Seaboard uh, uh, that, that is uh, identified by, by the NAND payloads? Um, IEEE 754 has had some uh, few additions, few more normative paragraphs added in the 2019 version. So they, they seem to be aware that they have this big hole in, in their standard as well. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, we, we kind of have to position ourselves uh, to that. And I, I think the current text in Dash 01 is what we need here. Uh, but of course, uh, uh, we should actually implement that. And uh, given that my implementations are mostly from 2013, I haven't addressed that. And um, I think quite a few other people haven't done that either. Um, so what this does not mean is uh, that uh, the, the better specification of deterministic encoding suddenly creates a need to implement this for for every implementation, uh, but those of our or th th those of us who want to understand what we write in the CDE document, maybe want to look at their implementations and maybe add the two or three lines that will be necessary to um, support that if if they already have uh, basic support um, for for some form of uh, NAND transform, and I think most most uh, people have an implicit application profile that simply reduces all NANs to uh, acquired NAN with uh, zero payload. Um, I think that that's uh, quite appropriate for, for a large part of the specifications uh, uh, of the implementations of the applications we have out there. Um, but uh, yeah, if people want to do more floating point and, and I have been surprised by, by the number of people who 
are thinking about floating point much more seriously now than two or three years ago, uh, then we need to, to cover this. So this would be my summary of where we are with CDE. And I think this would be a good time to take questions, contributions, statements on this document. Lawrence? All right, can you hear me okay? Somewhat um, broken up, but um, I, I think it works. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm kind of the, uh, I mean, I, I think I'd like to see NAND payloads not supported just to use the, the you know, the, the half precision one um, for a couple of reasons here. Um, one is that the programming environments uh, generally do not support NAND payloads. I mean, if you you can do it in C and C++, but I think it could be hard to do it anywhere else. Um, and when you do it in C, C and C++, you're really, you have to, to read, you know, 754, figure out how to do, you know, casts and bit shifts and stuff like that. Um, it's not terribly difficult once you see it, but um, it's not something that, it's easy to figure out how to do um, in like there's no you know see see there's an is nan method but there's no you know way to get the, the nan payload out with a with a library so just programming environments don't support this also you have to go through and support it as as literals and there's no literal in 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 c um there's no definition in CDDL. i mean there's there's just a, a lot there where this is this really is a dusty corner of of, of programming environments in general. Um, so that's one reason. Um, uh, as far as use cases, um, you know, I think, I mean, I'd actually like to see like more of an end-to-end -end use case, um, uh, that rather than just, we need to do this because 754 supports this, uh, even, <laughs> um, uh, there should be like a real end-to-end -end use case. I know, um, I think it was Joel or Joseph uh, Hillebrand um, suggested one. So maybe there's one there, but I'd like to see a little bit more uh, on use case. Um, uh, another um, is, to, to, to me, this is, we're trying to do ter de determinism here. Um, and to, to have a part of and to me, uh, serialization, Seabor serialization is one of these things that, that confuses people. It's hard to get your head around. Um, you know, I think we mostly get by uh, pretty well with just um, preferred serialization, but it seems like it's a reasonable step at this point to uh, really try to lock this down and have a really tight specification here. So um, to, for our new, brand new, deterministic specification to, uh, um, to have kind of a, a uh, still have a dusty corner where you have to like say, well, we really, uh, um, uh, you know, we said this, but we mean that and it's okay to, to shortcut this. That seems kind of not so good in a, in a, in a situation like this um, when we're trying to really tighten down what's going on with the uh, encoding serialization. Um, uh, let's see, what was I? A couple more things. Um, uh, I'm not remembering now. Uh, um, oh, I don't think, you know, just be because uh, uh, I don't think we're obligated to support all of CBOR. Um, it doesn't, it's, I mean, I, I kind of understand the sentiment, but I don't know that, you know, it's, it's kind of a, this is a place where Cbor allows for something, but the general the, the general programming environments in the world doesn't doesn't really support it very well. So, um, and we're not closing this off for forever. This is just CDE, which is not necessarily the vast majority of use cases. We still have the option to do um, anybody has the option to do it. They don't do CDE. CDE is not necessary for most use cases. So, I'm um, just like. Um, uh, uh, indefinite length. Um, if you don't, if you if you need NAN payloads, just don't do CDE. You're, you're, it's not it's not uh, ending it forever. So okay, that, that's it. That's my summary.
Yeah, my response to this would be that that might have been a, a very good discussion in 2013 um, when we nailed down what what CY actually is. Um, <clears throat> but using the 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 occasion of of uh, defining CDE uh, to to suddenly deprecate uh, NAND payloads in in one form or the other. Uh, doesn't strike me as the right thing to do. And um, as you said, it's not that hard to do it right. And um, um, maybe adding some some more pseudocode, I think one of the very valid criticisms of, of uh, 049 and data 8949 is that the pseudocode doesn't address uh, NAND payloads and we probably should uh, add uh, the pseudocode, and uh, as I said, it's probably around three lines or so of, of code, so it's it's not not that complicated. Uh, but of course, the translating it into different programming environments is uh, difficult. But I'm 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 not uh, so so surprised by that. So when, when I did the the Erlang uh, support uh, for for Cibo, the the initial one that we did in 2013. Um, Erlang doesn't have NANDs at all. And it also doesn't have infinity and a negative infinity. So a CBOR implementation for Erlang actually has to invent their own uh, runtime representation of, of this information. And okay, Erlang is, is maybe a re very friendly uh, programming language in, in this respect. It, it's easy to put in support like this in, in Erlang. Uh, but it strikes me as something that that can be done if if people really want to have this in their application protocols. Um, so I wouldn't say that uh, it, it's the, the fact that it's not defined how to get at NAND payloads, say in in JavaScript or so, um, is is uh, uh, something that uh, needs to stop you from implementing uh, CBO support. Yeah. Um... I mean, I understand if it was 2013, we might have made a different decision, but I don't really think that, you know, it's been it's been this dusty corner ever since, and, and it's still going to be a dusty, messy corner, messy corner. We're not going to, it's not, it's never going to become uh, a really mainline thing that people are going to use. It's just always going to be this dusty corner, and and I, because it's, the, the use cases are not that important, and programming environments, they're not uh, supporting it that much, and um, probably never will, um, and uh, um, I, I, I really kind of, I mean, I'd like to see CDE not have any dusty corners. Yeah, I'm, I'm very optimistic that we can define CDE uh, in such a way that it's all very clear and, and well-defined. Um, I ca cannot do anything against uh, implementation saving dusty corners. Uh, but I think we can define CD in such a way that, that people, if people want to support this, uh, they can do this in an interoperable way. Wolf? Yeah, so uh, I think the main thing I'd like to add to the conversation is that uh, our reason for um, closing off this uh, kind of debate within the DC board proposal was not that it's a dusty corner per se, but that it uh, is um, it, it's semantically ill-defined. It you know there's no standard way of using NAND payloads. Uh, my understanding is they're mostly used uh, often internally in floating point package implementations. They're not generally in an interchange format of any kind. Um, and so, if we're specifically talking about determinism. And of course, DC board takes you know a much more opinionated view on certain things than CDE has to. So I'm not necessarily saying that CDE has to take the same approach that DC board has taken. But if we're talking about determinism, um, you know, the I think uh, one of our guiding principles in uh, DC board is that things that have um, the same semantics should have the same representation. And because this has no semantics, <laughs> there's no way to represent it in a in a unique way um and therefore you know we chose to close that off and um you know we certainly would have no objection if cde decided to close it off um in a similar way uh, or compatible way um we wouldn't mind pushing that down to the cde level um on the other hand you know we're also fine with um 
keeping our opinionated stance at the DC war level and uh, letting uh, letting CDE kind of leave that open if they wish. Um, but again, it's not about it being a dusty corner. It's about it being a semantically um, you know, non-defined corner. Karsten, if you're speaking, we're not hearing you. I'm, I'm not speaking. I think uh, the proof's point was, was good, but it doesn't take away from, from the point I was making about CD. So what, what, one thing we could do just, just for, for the fun of it uh, would be to, to uh, define a, an application profile in CDE that says, uh, hey, here's an application profile that relieves you of, of all those uh, NAN payload headaches. And of course, DCB is, uh, DCB is a subset of that application profile. So the, the two are compatible uh, with each other. And the content of the application profile would be that uh, only the one uh, NAN uh, for, form of NAN that uh, we all like is supported the, the non-negative uh, quiet zero uh, NAN. Lawrence? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be in favor of that. Um, it just, uh, you know, us folks here in in uh, this the working group, uh, you know, we're familiar with uh, a lot of this stuff, but the majority of the world is not. And and I just think that already having preferred serialization and CDE and DCBOR uh, and that serialization is confusing to people, um, uh, it's just a lot more, I think, I mean, I'm not that familiar with the JSON world, but it seems a lot more complicated than the JSON world. And it just, so if, if you have to pick I mean, to get interoperability that's really solid, if you have to pick a CDE and then pick a profile of CDE, that sounds really uh, contortionist and and not very friendly, not very user friendly. So I was not talking about profiling CDE, I was talking about an application profile. <laughs> okay, just the fact that you got to distinguish between an application prof profile and a uh, CD profile. It's. I mean, I'm not. I'm not really even a fan of of profiles in um, CBOR. Um, I mean, some places we need profiles, but it seems like you know having serialization things and profiles. That's already seems too much to me too. Um, so. Yeah, I was not talking about profiles in general, but uh, about the specific uh, meaning of application profile in in this context. Yeah, but we, we don't have to do that. Uh, in the end, of course, every single application will have its own definition of what, what is valid data for interchange. And uh, we could call this application profile or we could not. Uh, and <clears throat> the, the generic encoder, decoder will always have to have some platform considerations uh, which uh, might make it uh, support certain parts of, of CBO and not support certain other parts of CBO. So this this is not not a totally surprising uh, situation. Christopher? Yeah, I guess I'm. What I'm running up against is I don't know who the customer is. So one of the criticisms that we had early on with, you know, when we presented to dispatch uh, uh, DC bore and um, uh, Gordian envelope was, oh, well, you know, you really have to have a customer within ITF, you know, somebody who actually wants to do that function. 
And uh, we had a cu- ended up having a customer for DC Boar, which was this community. Um, and, uh, you know, we're still, you know, we still don't for sure have a customer for, um, you know, uh, elision um, uh, structures. So, you know, when I'm listening to this, I'm going, if I, I don't hear anybody saying, oh, I need to exchange um, uh, the, you know, date, the floating point down to the NAN level. Um, if, you know, there was some weird AI uh, thing out there that, you know, you, you know, was desperate for that level of, of uh, transfer detail, then I would say we, you know, there was a customer, but, you know, who's the customer here? That is certainly one valid perspective. Um, of course, I'm more arguing <coughs> from the perspective of the ecosystem. Uh, so I'm not addressing specific customers. I just know that that uh, uh, people will want to use what they have in their their uh, programs and in their data sources. Uh, so. Uh, taking out NAN payloads and say, as soon as you have NAN payloads, you can no longer can exchange them deterministically sounds much worse to me than simply defining how to do that. I mean, maybe, maybe you can just read the text that is now in, in city dasho one whether that's sufficient um, for, for that purpose. But uh, I think we, we have to make some, some ecosystem uh, decisions here, and and since then payloads are for better or worse uh, part of CBO, uh I, I think we should put in that that uh, specification support in the knowledge that that uh, not everybody will implement this. Um, to 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 shape this a bit up with the points that have been made, um, how is this um distinct from say um indefinite link indefinite length encoding that is also not part of CDE because it Kind of, it's just too. It would be too many choices. Well, the, the applications are not supposed to make a difference on, on whether something is uh, sent indefinite or indefinite length encoding. There isn't supposed to be a bit of application data in in that uh, decision. So the the uh, two choices are semantically equivalent. And, and CDE takes the position that we should do all deterministic encoding with definite length. Uh, as you know from ASN1, that's not a foregone conclusion, but uh, in the end, ASN1 also arrived there through the, the detour of first inventing canonical encoding rules, which was the other way around. They, they finally decided they wanted to have the second formal, the distinguished encoding rules, and that, that is essentially the definite length uh, version of ASN1. So I think it's it's a very different um, issue. Lawrence? I mean, I think the, for me, the difference is that there's clear use cases for indefinite length encoding and uh, very obvious what those are and and where there's not clear use cases for, for NAND payloads. And another thing is, Indefinite length encoding can be uh, easily implemented on, you know, any in, in any program envi programming environment, and NAND payloads can't. So, so if you're trying to pick the weird, the weirder thing to eliminate, NAND payloads is definitely the weirder thing. <laughs> yeah, but again, this is an argument for 2013, and I'm currently trying to discuss CDE. Yeah, me too. I think this, um, I don't think we'll make much progress on this uh, here today. My suggestion is that, um, Carsten, if you, um, I, some, someone mentioned earlier, I'd have to look it up in the minutes, was that there are use cases all around already. Um, uh, Carsten, could you try to 
find them so that we have the points around because if um, if those turn out to be substantial enough, um, then we might um, get around get around some of this discussion altogether if, if if we have any. That's not to say that we necessarily need any, but that is to say that the discussion is probably easier yeah. if we have them at hand. So what one uh, recommendation from me would be to read section 9, 9.7 of uh, IEEE 754-2019. Um, th that's the, the API they now uh, have put into 754 to, to access um, and then information. Now, of course, that, that is an API that hasn't been picked up uh, by, by C or C, C++ yet. Um, I would expect that they have made this recommendation in the uh, uh, with the assumption that um, it will be. Um, but this this uh, the examples there actually hint at a use case which are essentially um, decorating a NAN with information of what exactly went wrong here so what was that uh, um, division by zero or what was this uh, some some other domain error in, in a function and so on um, this is really what what uh, nan payloads um, seem to be in, intended to be used by the people who wrote that section 9.7 of i 7.4 but I, I can extract that and, and write a message I think that will be helpful. Thank you. Shall we move on to DC board? Uh, Wolf, is that you raising the hand for the queue for this topic or already getting started with DC board? Uh, actually, I'd like to let Karsten introduce the, the DC board section uh, as we're working on it together quite closely now. Okay. okay. Um, yeah, so uh, we have had two new revisions of the, the uh, DCBO uh, draft. Um, and uh, this is now based on CDE. So it's uh, now really a quite simple uh, document. And I think that that was really an important objective uh, to achieve here uh, to, to expose the the simplicity of, of what is now uh, there so that that will really aid implementations who, who do not want to cope with uh, the more general uh, issues and <clears throat> I have marked uh, the the current draft as replacing the the draft I wrote in an attempt to to get this uh, uh, separation between CDE and and um, DC boss so that's no longer needed. So I think the, the most important thing, apart from maybe further improving the editorial clarity of the document, uh, will be to decide what do we actually want to do, where we is both uh, the, the authors and the working group. And on this slide, I, I set up uh, six uh, boxes we could check off. Um, I wouldn't be happy with... Uh, uh, the choice to just give up on this and, and stop work on it because it, it does provide uh, something that, that may be useful to an application protocol uh, developer. So there, there are five boxes that I think are in the domain of what um, uh, we could choose as a working group. So we could uh, try to complete this as a working group document. And we have the three choices, standards, tracks, experimental, and informational. Or uh, we could, we being the working group, uh, could uh, say, OK, uh, we are not get going to get consensus on this. But we don't mind uh, with the, the document going to the independent submissions editor to become an independent stream RFC. And in that case, it, uh, we still have the choice between experimental and, and uh, informational. Um, the the cho third choice, of course, the being standard track uh, doesn't work that way. So th there are different levels of, of sending away this document to the ISE. 
uh, could be one of uh, mostly disapproval. Uh, no, we don't want to pollute the, the zero ecosystem with this, or it could be uh, one of, of mostly approval and, and uh, even active support, people doing reviews of, of the document. Of course, the, the independent stream editor, Elliot Lear, uh, will uh, solicit people to provide reviews, so th those uh, could come from the working group members as well. Um, so I'm, I'm not uh, trying to, to modulate this, this, uh, uh, th these two checkboxes here down there uh, with respect to the amount of support from the working group, but it would be less support than, than saying, okay, this is actually something we, we want to do as a working group consensus uh, uh, document. And if we want to do it as a working group consensus document, then we have the full choice of standards track, uh, experimental and informational. So standards track would mean this is the way to do this. Um, experimental means um, we have a, a, a solid, complete specification, uh, but uh, we want to conduct an experiment based on, on this. It, it's not something that um, is a foregone conclusion. And at the end of the experiment, we will decide what, what the next steps for this uh, will be. And we have informational uh, in the sense of, uh, folks, we have written up a way how to do this. Um, and uh, we think it is good information to have uh, written up this, uh, but it's not necessarily a normative uh, specification. Even if the document in itself can use normative language, um, this doesn't. This wouldn't imply that we have uh, found the one way to do this that we would like to to standardize. And of course, the same thing happens for for an independent submission. So experimental would mean uh, we we have to try this out and and see how well it works. And and based on that, we will make future discussions. And informational means uh, we have written this up. Um, because it's a useful specification and, and typically vendor specifications that become RFCs take the ISE informational uh, road because there's not, nothing experimental about the vendor specification, but um, it's also not something that, that is under change control of, of the uh, IETF. So this is the choice we have to make. We don't have to make this today. Uh, but I think we have to, to keep this in mind and uh, make up our minds of what we collectively as a working group uh, want to get out of this uh, document. Yeah, um, <clears throat> you'll have to forgive my ignorance about how exactly things are done in the IETF. Uh, so if I say anything that, you know, isn't, according to procedure, please um, educate me. Um, but it seems to me that the, one of the things that hasn't been discussed is that, uh, so far is that CBOR, DCBOR is now based on CDE. And it seems to me that the same decisions about the track that CDE itself is on have not been um, discussed or decided. And uh, because DCBOR is now based on CDE, um, it seems to me that's a prior uh, decision that needs to be made. Um, if CDE is going to be on the standards track to being an RFC, um, then I'd say, you know, uh, we would definitely prefer that the CBOR be on the same track behind CDE uh, as CDE is now dependency. Um, but if CDE takes a different course, then the CBOR, I would say, would also likely take a different course. So um, I would like to understand better what the intention for CDE is. Uh, and I think that would probably help me at least, if not the rest of the group, decide the track that DC board should be on. Um, I'd I'd have to look it up, but I think uh, that uh, CDE is in the uh, is on the standards track because it is re more or less replacing uh, the deterministic encoding uh, considerations that are in the original uh, C board RFC. Um, as for for what the interdependencies are. Um, the thing that we can uh, that we can have, but we are trying to avoid, is a down reference. That means that something is a standard threat document, but referencing an informative document normatively. Uh, so if um, if 
CC, uh, if CDE were an informative document, then the then having DC board on the standards track would raise questions, not insurmountable questions, but questions that need discussing and are best avoided. Um, in the other direction, um, things are um, things are more open. So, um, given given that DC board is building on on CDE, it just can't have a say higher um, normative status than DCE. Um, right, that, that's un, that's definitely understood. Yeah, so my, my take was that uh, we already discussed this and said we, we for CDE, and we said we, we want to uh, take this forward as a standard track specification, as you say, uh, because it clarifies something that, that is uh, uh, defined in, in uh, uh, RFC 8949 and also uh, makes some additional decisions that, that for 8949 left. Uh, open and it's intended to be useful as a uh, normative reference in, in other documents. So I would be very surprised if we decided it, it's, it doesn't have all the necessary qualities for, for going uh, standard strict. Um, and the, the, one of the reasons why this is true is it's supposed to be a common profile. It's not, not uh, um, one out of many ways of doing things, of course, you can still decide to deviate from it. That, that's not uh, disallowed. But uh, if you are writing a generic uh, encoder, decoder that is supposed to support uh, determinism, then, then CDE is, is the way to, to make your decisions in this uh, process. Now, DC bore is definitely different in that it uh, does restrict the, the uh, set of uh, data items that, that are supported and other uh, applications are more likely to have different requirements here than, than uh, DC both. So it's not um, by itself the way to do things, but it, it's uh, a well thought out way and one that we do uh, recommend to people for people to consider if they uh, want to further simplify the, the data model that uh, CBO and, and uh, DCE uh, CDE um, offer to an, an application. So that, that's why I'm, I'm not particularly sure which of these five uh, cases uh, we should take, but I think it, it's really useful input input to know that, that uh, at least some people want to go standard strike with it. That, that's useful information. Um, and uh, I would be interested to, to hear from, from people who maybe don't want to do that. Ara? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to point out that both the November and the January drafts of CDE do not say proposed standard intended status. They say best current practice. True. True. That is not standards track. It is related, but it is different. And so, and actually best current practice rather makes sense to me for CDE. Um, but um, I just wanted to point out that's not on the not on it hasn't been discussed here and i and i think that um either cde should change to proposed standard which actually i think would be less appropriate than best current practice or we should um, expand this discussion a little yeah good point i missed that um uh, with chair head off, there is one point, uh, one question that I wanted to raise in this, this in this uh, topic of where do we go, um, Christopher? I think you mentioned that there is a consumer or a use case for um, for DC World Gordonian, or for at least DC World uh, within the ITF. Um, their path um, would might narrow what we have to do here. So if it's if if they need a normative reference, that would, for example make informative an op choice here. Oh, 
or, or, or wall forecast maybe you know the who that is precisely to, to, I don't want to jump the queue um, but to directly answer your question um, you know there has been expressed interest in a structured data format that supports elision um, there are some existing uh, privacy and human rights requirements RFCs that suggest that this is a good idea but so far nobody has done it um, so we are proposing you know uh, not necessarily uh, Gordian envelope, although it is an example, but we're basically saying, hey, we need some elision friendly uh, formats uh, because that is the, re you know, a requirement of the future for privacy and, uh, and human rights, um, you know, again, as per two uh, established RFCs that say, you know, these are things we ought to be doing in our standards, but apparently we are not. So that's kind of the, the the challenge we have is that nobody so far has said oh we're going to put elision capable um uh in our ietf standards um but we okay, think they thanks. should so so that means that there is no current document yet that has concrete requirements well okay. uh careful um th there is some specific work over in the the jose uh, working group that, that also will apply to, to COSI uh, that is addressing some of the use cases that a more general uh, illusion friendly uh, format uh, could do. Uh, so I think we, we would have to examine uh, that work, which uh, by the way, also can make use of additional cryptography to, to facilitate. Um, this so that that's uh, really one interesting question that that this whole field of of religion friendly of privacy friendly um, statements signed statements uh, needs to to make. Uh, do we want to get by with existing crypto primitives or and and somehow limit uh, what what we can do, or do we want to fully explore uh, th this set of primitives uh, possibly? Uh, getting additional cryptographic issues that that we currently don't ha have, so that, that, that's a, that's all not not an easy area of work. And I'm really looking forward uh, to to having this discussion because right now we have some some very focused, very targeted things over in Jose that n may not necessarily fill the the entire set of use cases we may be interested in. But apart from that, uh, yeah, it, it, um, uh, if if something goes standard track in, in this area and wants to make use of uh, deterministic uh, encoding, then uh, having uh, a standard track document would be useful. I should probably also add that uh, the, the whole uh, crypto support in the IETF is based on IRTF uh informational documents so we we are contradicting our own principles here a little bit uh, yeah. but, but that's maybe a discussion on its own uh, wolf yeah i mean uh the, my understanding that uh uh that cde was not on the standards track at this point seems to be correct um uh, but uh, obviously it sounds like Karsten feels like maybe it ought to be there. And again, I'm not sure what the procedures are, but, um, you know, given that, you know, we do depend on CDE and we do think that DC war has an audience and a future, I'd say, you know, uh, in my less inf informed opinion, um, that if CDE is to be on the standards track that we at blockchain commons would prefer that DC war also be on the standards track. Um, and, uh, um, I, I'm off the top of my head. I don't know what the exact next step of that would be, but uh, adoption by the WG as you know, uh, uh, as a workgroup document um, would be one step. Um, at this point, we have um, you know three co-authors on the DC board paper, all of which are present, and uh, you know we have both rough consensus and running code. So um, you know, so I'd like that to be considered uh, in due course. Yeah, maybe it's worth clarifying that. Uh... Uh, we do allow normative references to BCPs and standard track documents. Um, 
Uh, Christopher? Yeah, I have two points also trying to respect time. Um, the, the first point is that I feel like uh, CDE, um, you know, directly implies profiles and having an example of a profile uh, is a good one. Um, uh, you know, they're, um, uh, you know, I, but I don't quite understand the difference between experimental and informative. Uh, you know, uh, TLS was informative first um, when I was uh, chair um, and then went to standard. It was never experimental. Um, so experimental always says to me, oh, well, this is, you know, good for a year, two years, but, you know, don't, it's going to, you know, expect that it's going to change. Whereas, you know, in, informational is, uh, you know, it's, it's, um, instructive to the community. Um, but, you know, will it be 20 years or two years is indefinite. Um, so I didn't know, you know, uh, if, you know, if that has changed in recent years that experimental has some higher level, you know, right now it's, you've got it on this list between standard and informative. Um, so that was my uh, first question. The second thing was just more to, uh, clarity. So the other thing that, that Envelope, which is uh, built on top of DC board does is support uh, graph structures and other structures. And that's, you know, one of my hopes is that the, the you know, the CBOR community basically says, yeah, it is time for us to be able to support some of these more, um, uh, sophisticated structures in a standard interoperable way, such as structured data uh, and graph data, um, uh, because that is one of the things that's limiting. We're, when we talk to other developers about uh, CBOR, they're going, oh, well, but it doesn't work with my, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, RDF, or it doesn't work with my graph database, or it doesn't work with, you know, my structured data. Um, you know, it's just this, you know, it's just this list. Um, so uh, um, there is sort of an intersection with the future of, of CBOR is, is CBOR, is the CBOR group going to uh, begin to allow for some standard structures, um, uh, you know, for, you know, these important data formats? That's it. Oh, sorry, Lawrence? Yeah, I just want to speak in favor of standards track for both CDE and DC bore. Uh, DC bore seems well enough to find reasonable use cases, not too difficult. And I just think it would be nice to have that in the in the you know on the standards track for all of the the use cases in C bore and um, the extra review and backing that it'll get as a standard. I think is good. Um, me again with uh, without my uh, chair hat. Uh, two points on on the standards track. Um, a um, something that I've seen with um, in in core as well. Putting something in the standards track will mean also mean that um, if people have concerns about the applicabilities of this, um, those might be need, you might need to put those out more prominently in the document because. Um, if, if this is standards track then pe and people have concerns, these need to be addressed. Um, the other is on the topic of um, CBOR wanting to have um, more sophisticated data structures, uh, especially graphs. Um, yes, I want those. But if that means that I'll have to buy into the numeric reduction of DC uh, of DC bore, I'll likely not use them. So um, let's let's look at that's uh, so I would hope that those topics can be a bit independent. Yeah, that's my two comments here. And Karsten, you have something else, and um, we are approaching the top of the hour. Um, yeah. Let's stretch it a bit, um, but um, I see that people are already preparing to leave. Let me just quickly point out that I have experimental on this slide only for the single reason that the DC board draft currently says it's experimental. Uh, which is not not the decision I, I have made. So I, I think we can strike this from the list because it's not really what we think this is. And uh, I think we, we can um, generally think about the BCPs, but I think BCP doesn't make uh, sense for, for DC bore either because it's not 
the best current practice, it's one current practice for a certain subset of applications. So BCP would be confusing. So this uh, reduces uh, the number of choices from five to three. Um, any more comments before I, I'll conclude here? So my summary from this is that there is kind of good support here for doing this in the working group. I haven't heard anyone speak out against doing it in the working group. Um, and the line of discussion is more between BCP or STD, um, but not putting this into experimental or informative. So um, I think those are kind of BCP and, and standards are the, the ones that it will be, and we'll have to figure out the details there. Um, yeah, um, we'll see that when we when we're progressing as a working group. But I think uh, work kind of, it sounds like something that we could have a working group adoption call at some point, um, with the intention of going in somewhere somewhere STD BCP ish. Okay, we are um, one minute over. Uh, just a yeah. quick uh, comment there. Are Two more slides on a completely different uh, subject. Uh, so if people want to look at those slides, uh, I plan to have a draft available uh, by the, the next uh, interim. Uh, so we can talk about this Yang Sibo thing. And I think we have to have the discussion about Gordian envelope. And I, I like the, the statement you made, Christian, that this maybe needs to be modularized. Uh, a little bit so so you don't have to buy into the whole thing in order to to use uh, certain parts like like the graph um, support um, but I think that 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 is a really big uh, subject that that needs its own uh, considerations uh, Christopher sorry that we're running out of time for Gordian is there some some short point that you would like to make before we are getting kicked out of the room We don't hear you. Sorry. Um, yes, if we do this separately from this working group, then we have to go through the whole, um, uh, you know, process of problem statements and areas of work and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, uh, you know, we I'm quite open to you know some subset of what Gordian Envelope does uh you know uh and you know see if that fits within this working group um so but if there is interest if there are other people that are going yes uh you know structured data and hash uh data elision and things of that nature is important enough to be a separate working group then you know i'll be glad to participate in it but it like i said part of it just feels like it belongs here <laughs> so that's it Okay, thank you. I can definitely um, share the. I do definitely share this. Uh, kind of might fit fit here, um, but I think we'll see that when when we continue this discussion over the next interims. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, that was a good sixty three minutes. Um, see you around in two weeks, and please enter any materials that you have for discussion then um, in the next. Uh, in the next meetings notepad. Thanks and have a nice evening or rest of the morning to you over in America. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, bye-bye. Thanks, everybody.